Hi, I'm Peter Sibelius, the founder of MedicalDeviceHQ.com. What you're about to see is part of our online course on project management for medical device product development. If this is your area of interest, check the link in the description uh, to read more about this course. While you're at it, click the subscribe and notifications buttons and make sure you never miss new content. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create a work breakdown structure. This is a super useful tool. Funnily enough, not every project manager knows what this is, and quite a few will actually be working with work breakdown structures without knowing it. So stay tuned to learn more about this important and useful tool. And where are we in the process? We are still early in the planning phase, trying to figure out what, is the, what it is that the project is going to be delivering. Previously, we looked at creating a project scope statement. The project scope statement was the text that you would often find in the project plan. It describes what the project should deliver. When adding the work breakdown structure to the project scope statement, we are creating a scope baseline. The inputs to this step where we create the work breakdown structure is the project scope statement and the requirements documentation. And the tool you would be using uh, is decomposition which is just about breaking down the project into smaller, more manageable pieces. And at the very end, out comes the work breakdown structure. And when that is approved together with the project scope statement, you have a scope baseline. A work breakdown structure defines all the things a project needs to accomplish, organized into multiple levels and displayed graphically most of the times. And it might very well look something along the lines of this tree structure that you're seeing on the right hand side. So why would you want to have a work breakdown structure? Well, the easiest way to answer that question is to look at what your Gantt chart would look like if you did not have a work breakdown structure. Your schedule would just be a very, very long list of activities. It could literally be hundreds of them. And there is no way you can get the overview that you need to effectively manage and understand that kind of schedule. Creating a work breakdown structure is to uh, subdivide or group your project into more manageable chunks of work that will help you oversee your project and present it in a clear way to stakeholders. And it's fair to say that the most common type of work breakdown structure that is created is done using project management software and indenting tasks to create summary tasks and work packages like in this example. This will create your project tree structure. I once did a review of 20 very large IT projects and I asked all the project managers if they had a work breakdown structure and all of them said no. And all of them had it in Microsoft Project without realizing it. Work breakdown structure in its purest and most traditional sense is based on breaking down the project into deliverables. Let's look at this example of the bicycle work breakdown structure. As you can see, there is the frame set, the crank set, wheels, braking system, shifting system, and then integration and project management. The two last ones being the only ones that are not entirely tangible deliverables. So this is the traditional work breakdown structure. But I think you should be aware of the fact that there are other ways you could be breaking down your project. So we just looked at the work breakdown structure, but you could also be making a life cycle breakdown structure, which would mean that you have life cycle phases from your project in the tree structure. You could also make an organizational breakdown structure um, where you divide the work based on the teams uh, or the organizational entities that is going to be working with a particular chunk of work. Or you could be creating a product breakdown structure. The truth is that when I create a schedule or structure of project, I use all of these different dimensions to break down the project into appropriate and manageable parts. Let's look at an example. What you see here is a work breakdown structure for an imaginary product called Preheart. The Preheart device is a system that is used for transporting donated hearts from a donor hospital to a transplantation hospital. It's made up of a transport box on the left hand side and a disposable organ container here represented by the box on the right hand side. I will show you an example work breakdown structure for this project that is to deliver this product. Let's examine the different parts of the work breakdown structure. 
In the first example, on the first level of the work breakdown structure, you see design, design verification, design transfer, design validation, and lastly closeout. Even though some of these phases would be going on in parallel, they still to some degree represent life cycle phases rather than deliverables. So there is an element of life cycle breakdown structure, and this is most certainly one way you could be doing it. Now, if you read it carefully, you might ask yourself, why isn't there any planning phase? The reason for, for that is that the work breakdown structure would normally not cover the planning phase because this structure is approved at the end of the planning phase, which means that initiation and planning would already be completed and therefore be more or less redundant when this work breakdown structure is presented to the steering group for approval. Now let's zoom in a bit. Here we have the transport box alongside with labeling and the disposable. The transport box is broken down even further into mechanics, electronics and software. So here you can see a more traditional work breakdown structure which is deliverable oriented and hierarchical in the sense that the transport box is broken down into two levels. In the design verification uh, arm of this tree, the verification has been split up into subsystem verification of the disposable, software unit testing, and then system testing, which in turn is broken up into different types of testing. What kind of breakdown is this? Well, we couldn't really tell without speaking with the project manager because it might be based on the type of testing and that seems reasonable. But remember that it could also be based on organizational entities or units because maybe electrical safety testing is outsourced. So that represents both a breakdown based on type of test as well as an organizational entity. And the software unit testing might very well be performed by a special team and would therefore also be an example of an organizational breakdown. And if so, the reason why you would want to break it down uh, that way might be to be able to track hours, cost and progress of that team's work. So as you can see, in this work breakdown structure, we've combined various types of breakdowns so that this structure makes sense to us and serves us as much as possible in the project. And this could most certainly be done in different ways. In this example, I have chosen to group activities in a different way. There are elements of life cycle breakdown on the first level since execution and design transfer it, in theory could be seen as two phases and steps. But in this version, the design verification is actually below the transport box summary task. When would this be appropriate? Well, maybe you outsource the development of the transport box and the contract says that the outsourcing partner is responsible for design verification. Then it would make sense to include that summary task in the transport box summary task. If the development partner will also be doing production, you could consider bringing up the design transfer of the hardware or the transport box to this branch as well. Now, the reasoning that we've gone through here and the examples that I've showed you is exactly the kind of thinking that I apply when working with a work breakdown structure. And I usually iterate many, many times over on the structure before it's the final work breakdown structure. In fact, the structure is usually not done until I'm done with the schedule. And I will show you how these two things fit together. Here on the left hand side, you can see my work breakdown structure in a project management software. Under the summary task or work packages that you see here, there will be tasks. So here I started putting in tasks. They are design casing, design lid and design disposable compartment. We have also put in logical relationships or dependencies between the tasks so that they start when the previous task is finished. So Apparently, there is a very strong connection, as you can see in this example, between the work breakdown structure and the schedule. In fact, they're shown together as one unit here. And this is the reason why I said that you will be iterating on the work breakdown structure until you're basically done with your schedule. Because when you put in tasks and durations, that will give you new insights as to how you should structure your project. So it's all very much connected. Let's get a little bit more specific about terminology when reviewing or looking at a work breakdown structure. Apart from work breakdown structure, there are three terms you need to remember. And we will use this example again. And let's start from the bottom. The lowest level in a schedule would be task or activities. And please note, now I said schedule, not work breakdown structure, because strictly speaking, the work breakdown structure does not include task or activities because the work breakdown structure ends on the level above the tasks and activities, which means that 
when we take one step up from tasks and activities, we come to the lowest level of the work breakdown structure, which would be work packages. The work package represents the lowest level of the work breakdown structure, for which cost and duration can be estimated and managed. It would be tempting to think that the next level in this example, that would be transport box, would also be a work package, but that is actually not a work package, but instead a summary task. Now, all tasks between work packages and the highest level are summary tasks. Work packages are always the lowest level above tasks and activities. Now, if you remember these things, you will be able to express yourself accurately when referring to the different boxes you'll find in a graphic or work breakdown structure, or the different lines of text you'll find in, for example, Microsoft Project Gantt charts. That was summary tasks, work packages, and tasks and activities. Another practical question is, how many levels should you have in your tree structure or your work breakdown structure? In this example, the deepest part of the tree would be four levels deep. And I think that four or maybe sometimes five levels would be appropriate as a maximum number in most cases, unless you have a very special reason to create more levels. Having too many summary task levels will just make the work breakdown structure more difficult to oversee, which in a way defeats its whole purpose. If you want the presentation of your work breakdown structure to be graphical, meaning it should look something along the lines of what I've shown you in my examples, you could use mind mapping software to present it. My favorite one being Mindjet Mind Manager. Now, fortunately, it's a fairly expensive software. There are definitely cheaper mind mapping softwares out there. Uh, but then again, Mindjet Mind Manager allows you to export the graphical representation of your work breakdown structure directly to Microsoft Project which could save you some time. And it sure looks impressive if you work together in a team in Mindjet Mind Manager and just with a click of a button, you can see how the schedule comes to life in Microsoft Project. You could also be using Open Project, which is an open source version of Microsoft Project, or you could be using Microsoft Visio. It might strike you as a su surprising that Microsoft Project is not on the list, but Microsoft Project will actually not be capable of showing the tree structure as anything else but text and indentations. Sometimes people insist that it can, but they're actually thinking about the network diagrams that can be shown as graphics in Microsoft Project. Text-based tools would then be Microsoft Project, Word or Excel, where you could be indenting text and thereby creating a hierarchical breakdown structure. The easiest way to get started on the work breakdown structure would be to have access to a template. If you're really lucky, you can get a template from someone who has been running a similar project successfully previously in your company, or you might even have it as part of your organizational assets. If that didn't work, you will probably have to create a work breakdown structure yourself. The nice thing about that being that you could have it exactly the way you want it. Now, some industries will even have industry-specific templates for work breakdown structures. When you are done creating a work breakdown structure, put it together with the project scope statement and put it forward for approval. When the steering group has approved your work breakdown structure and the project scope statement, you have your scope baseline. You had fun while watching this video, didn't you? I told you that you would. Project management is such a fascinating area to work with, and I'm here to help you do it properly. Now, care to share your thoughts? Leave a comment and I'll be happy to read it. If you still haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Thanks for watching. I'm Peter Sibelius, and I can't wait to see you next time. Until then, goodbye.